everyone. I'm going to talk to you about how you will build GraphQL APIs in steps in declaratively. The analogy that I'd like to draw to you is that before relational databases came about, you would actually program your way through file system access and others in order to actually build, build out your, your uh, data and data access. But then databases came about and everything became declarative that led to smaller code and better runtime performance. We are doing to GraphQL exactly what databases did to data. We are delivering GraphQL APIs that are built declaratively that leads to simpler code and, and better runtime performance. GraphQL itself, as you all are familiar with, abstracts away the backends and that enables front-end applications to actually access the data through one API and it is the job of the GraphQL API to assemble the data from wherever it exists. Steps in is, as, as we said, is, is a declarative construction of GraphQL APIs. And furthermore, then those, the declaratively constructed GraphQL APIs are deployed in a scalable Kubernetes container so that we get all the performance and low latency that, that you really want out of your APIs. So there are really three steps in building out a GraphQL API in steps in. You assemble these building blocks. These building blocks may go against some REST backend. These building block, a building block may go against database backends, or if you're actually federating your APIs, then it may go against a GraphQL backend. You build your, you build your schema out of those building blocks, and then you give it to steps in, and steps in produces a GraphQL API out of those uh, building blocks for with you having to do nothing. And then that API is now available for applications to actually access and, and all the scale and low, uh, high performance and low latency and all that are taken care of by steps in. So let's go and look at a demo. I'm actually going to do a very, very simple demo. I'm going to assemble two building blocks, a building block from a REST API that contains customer data and a building block from a MySQL uh, database that contains order data. I'm going to bring both of them together. Of course, there's a lot more magic that you can do, but I'll just bring those two together and deploy them in steps in. Okay, so let's go. I've got my, my uh, VS Code uh, open. Let's first look at what one of my uh, customer REST backend is, and it basically it's a I just did a curl call against that backend, and it and it uh, showed that for this particular customer, this is the kind of information it has. So now let's take that same curl call, and tell steps in go ahead and import it, go ahead and figure out what it has and what it doesn't have, and and generate a GraphQL scheme out of it. And so we have given we have given this to steps in and said steps in go ahead and import it. And steps in has gone and created a, a GraphQL schema out of that backend that contains the information associated with the customer. And, and it says that in order to get that data, issue this particular REST call. Now, of course, you can write this code by hand, but typically you'll kind of jump started by having steps in um, introspect the backend and get this. Now, let's do the same thing with the order backend. And in this case, instead of importing uh, from kind of a, a REST backend, I'm going to ask steps in to go look at a MySQL backend and get uh, get stuff from there. Okay, so I'm going to do a steps in import MySQL, and uh, we go and introspect that MySQL, and we have built out. In this case, the MySQL is very simple, but of course it can have foreign key and primary key, and we we take care of all of that and form the link graph associated with it. But here, uh, there is this orders. Orders has got these sets of bits, and in order to kind of get uh, get a list of orders issue a DB query. So all of this data, all of this scheme schema got generated by for you by just you pointing us to the backend and us doing it. So now let's take both of these kind of REST backend and a database backend. And now let's let's deploy. So let's do a steps in uh, start. What steps in start does is it takes all the things that I that sit in my working directory and deploys it to steps in. It actually deploys it to a cloud endpoint which is an anand.stepsin.net but I'm going to work off a local proxy uh, that, that is just a convenient development tool that actually makes the call to the cloud endpoint. So let's go there and, and let's, let's go execute this and let's go and execute two queries against it. And the first query was customer by email and I gave it a customer name and it, that, that query went in and it uh, steps and got it and converted it to REST call. And the second query was get me all the orders for customer uh, steps and got it and uh, made a MySQL call. Of course, you can connect the two so that you can get orders in the context of customer, but that's for uh, another demo. Okay, so I hope you saw how easy it is. You write a few lines of declarative code or you actually don't even write them. You just point us to the backend 
and out pops the declarative code that contains that at rest and at db query you deploy it and then we bring a million lines of code to actually make sure that it scales performs is secure and everything else so if you like it please sign up on stepzen.com 